Hello, my name is Andrew Marsbaum. And I'm Rico Suzuki. And we are additive manufacturing engineers at Ceratec. And welcome to our maintenance videos for our HP multi-jet unit. Today we're going to talk about cleaning the printer after every print job. So the HP printer has several maintenance tasks you need to perform, and all of them are listed in the manual as well as on the front panel touchscreen. Now, by default, after every print job, the maintenance tasks will not be listed out. However, you can enable this in the settings, and I'll show you how. So over from, our, from the front panel, you want to go to Settings, and then we're going to go to Utilities and Maintenance. From the Maintenance section, we'll go to Maintenance Task Reminders, and under Maintenance Tasks, enable After Each Job Reminders. Now, as you can see here, this bar just turned red and we have a list of tasks we need to complete. So these are gonna be the tasks that you need to do after every single print job. So we've just completed a print job and we pulled the build unit out and that's cooling. So once we pull the build unit, you'll see that the inside of the print chamber is very covered, is covered very much in powder. So we wanna clean this entire area here we have a few points of interest. We wanna make sure that the thermal camera right here gets clean. We want to remove the ink from the spittoon. We wanna do a good job of just vacuuming the general area inside of the printer, as well as uh, checking on the lamps underneath the print carriage here to make sure they're clean. So we'll go through, through these one by one. On the front panel, everything I'm about to explain is shown uh, through pictorials here. So when we click on one of these maintenance tasks and hit start, it's going to show us exactly what we need to do and what tools we need to do it. So it's always recommended you wear the appropriate PPE. Make sure you do wait a cooling period if the printer has just completed a print job as the print shaper will be extremely hot. And this is going to basically walk us through all the areas of the printer that we need to vacuum. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that right now. You want to make sure you're using an explosion-proof vacuum cleaner uh, because we are dealing with powder, which is uh, has a risk of catching on fire. So I'm going to start by just vacuuming all the areas of the printer. Now, before we start, the manual does recommend that you power off the printer. And the reason for that is it will make moving this carriage a lot easier. I'm going to show you a method where you can move the carriage through the menu and that prevents you from having to turn off the printer, which saves you time down the road. So we'll leave the print carriage in its place and vacuum all the areas of the print chamber. Another easily overlooked place to clean is right up behind the viewing window over here because a lot of powder can get trapped. And also gently brush over the thermal camera. So the next task on the list is to clean the bottom of the carriage and the fusing lamps. HP recommends that you turn the printer off to do this. However, there's an alternate way of doing it through the menu. We can go over into the settings, utilities, maintenance, clean print carriage. And we're going to move the print carriage to the clean position. It's going to have you hit okay, and then ask you to close the top cover. It's gonna run some safety checks and then it's gonna move the carriage over into the middle of the print chamber where we can access the lamps for cleaning. So this will take a couple moments, um, but I believe it'll save you time instead of turning the, the printer completely off and then waiting for it to reboot again, so. All right, so now the front panel has let us know we're ready to proceed and you can open up the top cover and now you see that the print head is centered over the build unit area. Since the build unit has been removed, we can get underneath the carriage to continue our cleaning. I have a little bit of deionized or distilled water on a lint-free cloth. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that there's no uh, powder that's fused to the lamp uh, glass here. And we're also going to clean the underside of the carriage. Now it's important that you do not wipe over the print heads because they have very small uh, 
nozzles that you don't want to get them clogged up with uh, any debris. So we're just going to go ahead and clean over the lamps, make sure that they look good and they don't have any excess powder on them. And we'll do that for both lamps over here. And then we're going to get the, just the general area of the print head. And notice how I am not going directly over the print heads themselves, just getting the enclosure around them. And that is all we need to do there. And now for the next task, now that we have the print head centered over here, we can proceed with cleaning this side of the printer that was covered before. So one section of the printer that can also be easily overlooked is the recoder spreader here. Be sure to pull this out and vacuum the top of it. One important thing to note is that you always want to push this recoder to the very back position. Otherwise, it could potentially collide with the carriage. So make sure that's always in its home position back there. So the next section we're going to clean is the front bar right here that the carriage rolls over. Um, for this, I like to use alcohol, but you can also use a little deionized water. I will caution you, make sure you do not use alcohol on any rubber components in the printer because alcohol will wear down the rubber. So you just want to come over here and clean up all the bits of powder that are stuck to the front bar here. Now, the printer, uh, the print carriage is in this position here. When we move it over to the center position to clean the lamps, that's when we're going to go ahead and clean that, this last foot of uh, bar here. So that's all you need to do for that task there. So the next task we want to do is make sure that the thermal camo lens is clean. So earlier I briefly brushed over it with our soft vacuum bristle. And then I'll take my lint-free cloth that has a little bit of uh, deionized water and just gently clean the lens. You don't want to be too rough with it, just uh, clean anything that you see on there. And that looks good and shiny. Another maintenance task is to clean off these capping stations here. You saw me previously brush over it with the vacuum cleaner. Now we're going to go ahead and use a cloth with a little bit of deionized water on it. Make sure you're not using alcohol on these rubber pads because alcohol will wear out the rubber. So you just want to come in and wipe off any excess powder or ink that's on them, and that's all there is to it. Now the last thing that we need to do before we're ready to print again is clean the spittoon. So for this, we're gonna go over into the menu here, click on start, and it's important that you mark it as done when you're done cleaning it. So we'll leave that for now, but we're gonna go over here to the spittoon. It does have a thumb screw that you're going to loosen and remove it. So as you can see here, there's a bunch of uh, dried on ink that we need to get off. So you can take this and you can put this in the sink and wash it. Um, some people will also use a scraper and gently scrape it off. I don't recommend using a scraper because this is a soft aluminum. So if you're using a razor blade, you can possibly um, uh, nick the aluminum with the hard razor blade. So it's best to just soak this in a sink for a little while and then uh, wash it off. It is non-toxic, so it can go down the sink, no problem. So we'll come back once that's done and reinstall it in the printer. All right, so we washed off our spittoon, it's all clean. Now let's go ahead and reinstall it. Insert this end into the slot here and then use the thumb screw to screw it back in place. Once it's back in place, we're gonna come to the front panel and mark this task as done. And once we hit done, it will reset the counter on that. And as you can see now, all of our required maintenance tasks are finished. So instead of having a red bar at the top, it's now yellow. This yellow is indicating that a recommended task or a material is low. And as we can see here, we have low fusing agent and detailing agent, which is why we have this uh, yellow bar up here. But at this point, we are ready to begin our next print. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.